Hello, everyone. You're listening to Advocast. I'm Janaya Owens. And I'm Benjamin Bassa. Here's our first story. 24-year-old Elliot John Henry Johnson, who drove the vehicle in the March 9th freeway shooting that killed former Contra Costa College student Demarcus Doss and injured his passenger, was arranged at the Superior Courthouse in Richmond last Thursday. Instead of entering a plea to his murder and attempted murder charges, his attorney asked the court to delay his pleas to April 11th. Johnson is being held at the West Contra Costa County Detention Facility in Richmond. His two 17-year-old cohorts, one of whom is the presumptive shooter, are waiting for approval from a judge to be tried as adults and are being held at the Contra Costa Juvenile Hall in Martinez. The only place for Muslim students to pray right now at Contra Costa College is behind the stacks of books that line the back of the Library and Learning Resource Center. But the president of the Muslim Student Association, Raya Alamari, wants to change that with the Interfaith Meditation Room. Alamari proposed to the Dean of Students, Vicki Ferguson, on March 10th to have the Interfaith Meditation Room, which would provide a quiet and peaceful safe haven for students of all spiritual backgrounds to pray, meditate, or just relax between classes. Now we'll go to Associate Editor Lorenzo Morotti for some details on the ASU's Grant for Support program. The treasurer of the Associated Student Union at Contra Costa College is holding the Grant for Support program until next semester to push for its restructure. The Grant for Support is funded through the $5 student activity fee, a fee that students are charged upon registration at any of the three campuses in the district to fund ASU operations. Treasurer Arias Robinson said the program, which has not been active since spring 2016 at CCC, was created as a way to give back to campus life by funding student-based projects, trips, events, or any idea that will benefit the most students possible. Five years since the student activity fee has been implemented, the fee has accumulated nearly $2 million from students, District Chief Financial Officer Jonah Nicholas said. This fee is an optional fee that students can waive at the beginning of each semester. According to the ASU's account details provided by the CCC Business Office, students on this camp have paid a total of $379,000. The ASU has spent about $329,000 so far. Robinson said while the ASU still uses the $5 student activity fee to fund events or any other operating expenses, pressure from various departments, programs, students, and community members about the program is growing. The program has only been active for two out of the five years at the student activity fee since the student activity fee has been collecting money. Repairs to the Knox Performing Arts Center after a drunk driver crashed into it on February 15th are scheduled to begin in two to three weeks, but at four times the predicted expense. The initial estimate put the price at $5,700, but further inspection revealed structural damage that will cost around $20,000 to $25,000. Buildings and grounds manager Bruce King said it was lucky no electrical water or gas systems were damaged. The bathroom behind the wall that was hit remains open, even with the structural bracing that was added to support the damaged structure. The annual craft feed was held in the gymnasium on Saturday, March 25th from 6 to 9 p.m. Student athletes and coaches volunteered their time to the fundraising event. Men's basketball coach Miguel Johnson cooked the crab just outside the gym until early 9 p.m. Johnson said everyone in the athletic department chipped in their time and hours to help out, and it really takes the whole department for it to be successful. He's been cooking crab for this event for about eight years. Miguel said there is approximately 400 pounds of crab, so his hands are full with all of that cooking. Johnson said most everyone in the athletic department chipped in their time and hours to help out, and it really takes the whole department for it to be successful. He's been cooking crab for this event for about eight years. They had approximately 400 pounds of crab. Retired government worker Howard Rue and his family came prepared with extra equipment, like a gas burner and a pot to heat his food in. We bring it every year, he said. The crab feed is the reason why we brought it all. It's all about meeting people, having fun, and helping the department raise money. It's a family outing, and we've been coming here for the last six or seven years. 
Copacabana Campus Center project completed, construction will begin again in early 2019 with $29 million allocated to revitalize the post-World War II era structures of the athletics department. The Major E funds will be used to remodel the gym annex, the gymnasium, and both locker rooms. Once started, the work is expected to take 16 months to complete. The structures are not being completely rebuilt because earthquake regulations would likely block any new construction in the area. It has not yet been determined where sports events and classes will be held during construction, but several community locations are under consideration. Students on campus play the murder mystery game organized by the Associative Student Union at the Student Center Plaza on Thursday. ASU Senator Jackie Oritz said the murder mystery game is based around completing a passport and is a way to challenge students while getting them to interact with each other. They completed the passport by visiting four booths around the campus. Liberal arts major Alima Tahir said it was fun playing the game and it gave her an opportunity to use the skills that she accumulated in school. ASU Senator Michael Murray said the second table is where people can read a transcript of police statements and see a picture of the murder weapon. He said the students can ask me questions and they'll be answered without spoiling anything. Or it said participants finished by going around the booths to bring the passport back to the first table and write who the killer is on the blank side of the passport. The first place winner announced the next day gets a Kindle fire with the next four people to guess the killer receives a $25 Amazon gift card. And that's it for this week's news bulletin. Stay tuned for our next podcast. I'm Janiah Owens. And I'm Benjamin Bassa. Thanks for tuning in. You fine folks have been listening to The Advocast. If you have something to say, we'd love to get some feedback and suggestions. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter at Accent Advocate, at Instagram at CCC Advocate, and Snapchat at CCCADV0CATE. If you write in, maybe you can read it aloud and respond. And that's it for this week's news bulletin. Stay tuned for our next podcast. I'm Janiah Owens. And I'm Benjamin Basso. Thanks for tuning in. And here's Associative Editor. Lorenzo Marty for our sports update. This week in Comet Sports, the baseball team edged Los Medanos College 8-7 in the first game of a three-game series on Thursday at the baseball field. The Comets, 18-16 overall and 3-3 in the Bay Valley Conference, will continue the series at Los Medanos College on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. On April 3rd, the Comets will travel to Fairfield to make up a game scheduled for last week against Solano College. It was postponed due to weather conditions. The Comets lost their second game of the series against the Falcons 7-3 on Monday. Including its makeup game, there are 13 games left in the Comets season. The softball team, 0-2, prepares to travel to Marysville for its doubleheader against Yuba College, currently 5-13 overall. And that's all for this week in Comets Sports. Thanks, Lorenzo. Sorry, folks, no Advocast to tune into next week, but the week after, the Advocast will return.